So here we have the men's national crit championships from Great Britain. It was done in like October or something, but anyway, I didn't make a video of it. So we're just going to watch the first lap. The power data is courtesy of Harry Tanfield, um, who finished second in this race. So early on, it's a pretty technical lap. A lot of watts. It's basically so technical that it's very hard to move up. I'd say nigh on impossible to move up, which means that you need to be in top position early on. And Harry Tanfield and, uh, and his brother did a lot of work just stringing out, making it hard, because I think realistically being on the front wasn't actually much harder than being in the bunch. And you can see here, this is a quite a fast corner. Most of the corners are quite fast. Like, to be honest, they're not, I guess, crazy, crazy technical in terms of like sharp corners and like whatever, but it's just, there's a lot of them. Um, and then the finish line is quite technical, actually, um, when they actually sprint towards it the rest of the time because at the top of the hill, it's not too bad. But you can see the, the, the speed in the corner is like 46, 47 k an hour. Like it's, de um, but it, yeah, luckily it's not too narrow. Um, and I don't think there were too many crashes. There's only one um, crash, I think. So anyway, basically the rest of the race until uh, about 20 minutes in, like the first 20 minutes was just hard, strung out. Nothing really happened apart from people getting spat the back. No one really did anything. No one attacked. I think there was maybe one attack, um, which we'll show you. But that was basically it. So now we're going to hop to later in the race charles page is so i mean he was he went on the attack which was quite quite clever to be honest um people are chasing team inspired which is like the green kit it's basically gb um national team but like under 23s then you got like harry tamfield lewis askey um charlie tamfield's there as well as ethan hater and a fair few other people um but you can see here charlie uh, harry tamfield's power data is big i mean he's a big boy he's like eight kilos maybe a bit more um but he's whacking a lot over 400 and a lot over 500 as well so coming into this, you can see more of the technical nature of it. The lap was about a minute and 10. So again, a lot of laps and, uh, you know, it's, it's a short one. So it means, I guess, lapping people is not too hard. But here, coming into this corner, um, I want you to watch uh, Harry Tanfield. So he's chasing him back. You can see on the front here, just slightly easing off into the corner. Um, Charles Page takes the corner very well. Harry Tanfield around here, Lewis Askey on his wheel. Um, and the key thing to watch is just the next corner because this is the decisive part of the whole race. And I think without this crash, which is going to turn up, it would have been very hard to actually get a gap. Because you can see here, it's like 50k an hour. Uh, it's just like up and down, up and down. It's like, there's just not really a lot. So you can see this is the sort of more technical thing. Harry Tanville goes here, 52k an hour. Now watch behind at the very back, third wheel slides out. And that makes the difference because Harry Tanville must have heard the carbon on the floor. Absolutely launched it. Lewis Hathke in his wheel. And um, Charlie Tanfield was also managed to get on, on his brother's wheel as well. And you can see here, the numbers go up a lot to like 570, 580. You can see Ethan Hayter knows, oh, hang on a minute, I need to get across here. So he's doing big, big watts to get across. Here are the two guys who both um, crashed out. Um, I think it was Donaldson who slid out for GB. I'm not sure who the uh, other Canyon guy, I think it could be Jim Brown maybe, um, who also basically crashed out. But Charles Page now gets caught with Harry Tanfield, Charlie Tanfield, and Lewis Askey. And you can see Ethan Hayter coming across. And it's a real strong turn from Ethan Hayter because they were doing a lot of watts here. You can see Tanfield is closing this gap. He's got his brother in tow. And there's only one man who could bridge that. I don't think anyone else really in the race probably would have been able to do it um, who wasn't in this group just because it's so hard. You can see here everyone's chasing because everyone knows this is the break. Like if you get in this, everyone's going to roll turns. There's no real reason why you wouldn't. Everyone's pretty strong in a sprint. Like no one's going to attack or anything until later on. Um, and you can see Canyon here is sort of like, blocking i think because i reckon they're like oh hang on we've got a guy in the top by chance of a medal pretty high especially because charlie tampio is a very good time trialist and pursuiter um so we're going to come towards the final couple laps nothing really happened they just rolled turns got a big gap and then realized now with about three or four laps to go that it's all sweet no need to stress but you can see here it's, it's like a decent climb uh like i think the gradient sometimes isn't correct but you can see here 32k an hour tamfield's doing like 400 watts so you can tell it's definitely not flat there at all uh, and it's interesting to see how Tamfield plays this, I think, in reality, he's probably one of the favourites. I mean, they're all good, though. They all can corner well. They're all pretty, like, got a good punch. There wasn't anyone who were like, oh, yeah, fair enough. They're definitely going to win, um, to be honest. And I think that's why none of them attacked, because they all trust their sprint in the end, which was made it an interesting race, made, uh, like, at the end, but a bit boring midway through, because you didn't really expect anything wild to have come. Ethan Hayter, you'd think, like, on a pure bunch sprint, maybe will be fast after a hard day, but... It's hard to say. Lewis Askey is also good at cyclocross. He's quite a punchy boy. And then you've got like Harry Tanfield, who's won Tour of Yorkshire in a reduced bunch sprint from a break. Uh, and then you've also got Harry Tanfield, who, oh, sorry, Charlie Tanfield, who's also very good team pursuiting. So you can see taking it round this corner, um, Charles Page, I think he knew 
that he probably didn't have the best sprint here. Like he has got a good sprint for sure, but like against this company, he probably realized if I go, I'm a Conti boy, people don't really know who I am, I might be able to get away. I also think maybe Charlie and Harry Tanfield could have played that because, okay, they're not on the same team, but if Harry Tanfield or Charlie Tanfield attached, all the other one would be like, I'm not chasing my brother down. And then that could have created some interesting issues potentially with people chasing it down. It's hard to, hard to say really. Um, so three laps to go now, like less than three minutes of race. You can see from the numbers, it's really taken out. Like the, the pace is definitely not as hard as it used to be. And Tanfield's just cruising back now. Ethan Hayter has been sitting on the back a lot. I assumed he probably did want to go from a lot further out, but it's just hard to do it because there's no real obvious like launch pad unless everyone sits up a little bit. But like round here, it's so narrow and it's still decently quick. Like, okay, it's not crazy, but it's quite narrow. It's hard to really get a big, um, like a big place where it's obvious to attack. And you can see here again, just on the front is old uh, Charles, Charles Page. I think in some ways maybe they should have bluffed more and been like, nah, I'm just not going to work at all because I know in reality that I don't have the best sprint and like you will work um, because, you know, the, the break was... It's pretty, I don't know exactly what the gap was, but it seemed like it was like 40, 50 seconds. And to be honest, bringing that back is going to be quite hard. Lewis Askey, again, he was like, I don't know, maybe unknown as well, potentially. Quite a young rider, I think he's doing like 20 or something. Um, and you can see around the corner, Hater gets gapped sometimes a little bit, um, but Charles Page on the back as well. I mean, it's hard the whole time just to make sure that you stay with the, with the bunch the whole time. Um, and I think getting towards the final part as well, it's just like... You know, everyone's a bit tired. It's it's hard to think right exactly what your tactic is going to be. And this is the thing. Obviously, there's no race radio or anything, so you really got to figure out on the fly, which I guess is sort of a disadvantage compared to a road race where sometimes the director can tell you in your ear, oh yeah, this is probably what you should do, or this person's looking tired. You really got to be on it um, the whole time in the crit. And two laps to go now, and you think if you're not going to leave it down to your sprint, you've probably got to try and sort it out, um, like sort out exactly what you're going to do beforehand. You can see Charlie Tanfield again pulls off here i mean the thing is also you've got to think like who actually wants like winning for some people like hater only cares about the win like podium is irrelevant but for some of the other guys the podium's probably good enough so they might gamble and be like you know what like i probably can beat two people in a sprint like you know you know it probably could happen then you're like well i'm not gonna risk it all for a win because you know it could happen but anyway charlie tanfield winds up a big big attack here um and lewis askey to be fair looks like he's about to follow it but instead ethan hater goes to like down here Decent cornering, a little bit of a gap to close, but Ethan Hater is super, super strong. And you can see here, 600 watts, 500 watts in the wheel. It's pretty crazy. So Hater's doing a lot of watts to close this. And you can see the speed they carry into this corner. It's like 56k an hour. Um, and again, it's interesting to see the sort of gap that Hater has along the corner. Um, and then pretty much closes that down. Cheerio. No one's going to go straight away. But Charles Page, I guess, had the slingshot from the back um, going through the corner and attacks really, really strong. But Lewis Gassi reads this. I think this is where Charlie Tanfield did well actually managed to get back on because he just did a big, big attack. Um, you can see, again, Ethan Hayes is closing the gap for Harry Tanfield. Um, you can see that's probably a pretty good thing to do. And I think at this point, though, like Lewis Askey realizes he's burnt a match and he has to go straight away because he's already burnt a match. And to be honest, at this point, you're not really going to be able to contest in the sprint. There's a one lap to go. You might as well just absolutely go for it. You know that the guy behind you, Charles Page, is just putting an attack. So... He's not really going to be able to chase you that well. And you just might get a little bit of hesitation behind. That's all you need, like five to ten seconds of hesitation. And cheerio, you probably got the W. But again, I think Charles Page here probably does too much work. I think he should have just been flicked the elbow and said, nah, just don't attack. Someone else close it. And Harry Tanfield now gets on the front. And he's like, right, boys, buckle up. Because I'm going to do some absolutely ridiculous watts to close it down. And just have a look at this. 800 watts out of the corner. But he just holds it. He doesn't sprint out the corner like to a 1300 watts. But he just holds high 600s the whole time, closing it down. And ultimately, I think Ethan Hayter now is sitting on, and this, I guess he was, Harry Tanfield was sitting on Ethan Hayter before, but there he gaps, um, uh, Tanfield gaps Hayter a lot in the corner and goes straight round him up to 800 watts, flying around here. And at this point, you're like, oh, I reckon he might have him. But unfortunately for him, he left the outside open. Hayter comes up on the inside and then on basically inside, outside, inside, and comes into the final corner. At this point, there's no way you're getting round. Uh, at all it's just too technical and harry tanfield takes the second uh, second place with ethan hater winning i think it was a really good race to be honest quite exciting the final part and i think the sprint in some ways tanfield didn't do much wrong he probably just could have closed the door it was sort of weird because it was like the outside and inside and outside and inside so it's quite hard to figure out exactly where to be but i think if you just stuck on one side of the barriers 
just like he let him go on his like left shoulder, um, sorry, right shoulder. And I think if he just had that a little bit better, probably could have got the W because it was definitely hard for him to come around. I mean, he definitely had more power, but I think if you'd gone that early, um, he definitely should have been able to hold him off. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I've got the women's one tomorrow and should be some more videos out for the next week.